Normally, this room would be packed by now. No, it would be overflowing. It never fails that it's standing room only on the evening that the Bartholomew Consolidated School Corporation announces and awards its Education Hall of Fame. But that just can't happen now during this pandemic. Tonight, we're gonna to celebrate our 43rd Hall of Fame inductee. It's an honor for me to acknowledge my friend and colleague, the Columbus North Assistant Principal, Susan Finke Scott, as this year's recipient. Susan, your family and all the people that you've worked with over the years and helped extend their congratulations and a lot of thank yous. You ought to just for a moment close your eyes and imagine who might like to be here with you. Mrs. Scott and, and I, because I know that we've got at least to be kind 40 years of uh, work in education, and we've seen lots of changes, and what a great thing that can be. Sometimes tough at the moment, but a great thing. New facilities, an emphasis on diversity, and how do we honor that. Chances to add technology each and every moment we can. And yet, as good as changes are, as difficult as there are, there are some changes that we just don't want. And one of those is that we don't ever want to have a moment when we don't have people working with our kids who've lost sight of why we're here. And it's to do what's best for them. And that's why Susan's here to get this award. Mrs. Scott, I, I'm going to tell you a couple of things. I want to acknowledge two things this evening yet. One is that you have memorized more articles on education than anyone I've ever known. It's hard to tell you something about it. Let's say, I were to say, I really like that teaching strategy. It's hard to say that to you without you telling me whether it was based on Piaget or Bloom or Sesame Street. You know you know, and you love explaining it as much as anyone I've ever met. The other thing that I'd like to add, and this won't surprise anyone here, is that I made a mistake. I once told Mrs. Scott that her room was in a terrible location. When anyone came into the main office, she was the only one they could see. I said to her, how are you getting any work done with everyone, and I mean everyone, coming into your room? Well, I was wrong. Her availability, her open door invitation was exactly what made her service so impactful. It allowed her to mentor, to listen, to see with those special eyes that you develop over the years, and to respond with the needs of others. She was sitting right where she was supposed to be. Susan, on a personal level, I want you to know that I ran into some difficulties thinking about what to say, so I used a lifeline and I phoned a friend. I called your brother John and I said, John, did Susan like playing teacher when she was little? He didn't hesitate a bit. He said to me, no, I don't remember that, but she liked being a dean. And your sister Cindy seemed to find that that was the right answer. Your dad, however, added, from a little girl on, all she wanted to do was take care of people just like the TV series of old, and your youth, Father Finke knows best. He knows that you made a difference. If the crowd were here in this room tonight, if they could pack it up, fill the hallways, they'd be smiling and telling stories and sharing compliments about Mrs. Scott's contributions. That's an important enough part of any celebration that we've decided to bring those voices to this meeting. Let's enjoy hearing from a few of the many who have appreciated the efforts of Susan Finke Scott. Thank you, Susan. Hi, I'm Mimi Bingham, and I'm honored to be here to talk to you about my friend, Susan Finke Scott. Um, when I think of Susan, I think of one word that pops in my mind is warrior. 
And being the true English teacher, I thought of looking it up and I found three definitions. One, a fighter, a soldier. Two, showing bravery. And three, a yoga position. So the first one about a fighter and a soldier, Susan fights for the underdog. She fights for the neediest student in the school. She fights and is in your corner for the teacher, the staff member who is in crisis. This is the person you want in your corner. This is the person you want fighting for you, fighting for your cause. The second definition is one of being brave. And Susan is definitely brave because she embraces every new curriculum method coming down from the Indiana State Department. She embraces it to the point that she then shows us the staff and we somehow are persuaded to embrace this new curriculum. The third thing is the yoga position. And you may think, hmm, that's sort of strange. But if you look at the warrior position in yoga, you will know that the arms are reaching out. And that is definitely Susan. She reaches out with a generous heart and a kind, kind personality. You want Susan in your corner, and I am honored to have nominated Susan for this Hall of Fame award. I am pleased to speak in support of one of the most extraordinary educators that I have ever known, Susan Finke Scott. As I have worked in multiple school corporations in multiple states, I've had the opportunity to work with many wonderful educators. Susan is without question among the best of the best. Susan began her teaching career at Hauser Junior Senior High School in 1974. After five years of teaching Latin and English, she came to BCSC in August of 1979. Here she taught 10 years as an English teacher before becoming a dean. She was a dean for four years and then became an assistant principal, a role she has served in for 28 years. She has been at BCSC for 42 years and had been an educator for 47 years. I cannot tell you the number of times in the course of a conversation with a counselor, a teacher, or a dean, I've heard her say, but tell me about the student, or quit thinking about it this way and think about it, how it impacts or is good for the child. She has determined that our youth are our future and spends her time finding ways to allow students every opportunity to succeed. In her current work, she has gone above and beyond in leading both BCSC and community members in work around developmental assets and developmental relationships. Listen to what those who have worked with her have to say about her influence as an educator. True champion for at-risk kids. North High School staff development leader. She works tirelessly to figure it out each year. Susan improved the quality of my life. I always knew that when I went to her that I would get good and honest advice. She just listened, which is what I needed. Susan has been a teacher, a dean, and an assistant principal whose life work has been to improve and enhance the lives of those around her. Yet, as she has done this, she has never lost her educational anchor, the child. Being born, raised, and educated in Bartholomew County, Susan Finke Scott has devoted her life to educating the local young people. But education is not her passion. People are. When she was a teacher at Hauser, she took time before prom to teach the students how to behave at a formal dinner. She set the table with all the fancy forks and knives and taught them how to use the silverware and what etiquette was required. So when they went to prom, they were comfortable in a new situation. Susan looks beyond the curriculum to see what students really need, their emotional needs, their physical needs, their social needs, and their academic needs. At CNHS, Susan has a heart for the at-risk student. She is an advocate for them in the community working with law enforcement, the courts, and other agencies. She sees the student as a whole person because she understands the local culture. Keeping up with the curriculum, Susan proves that she's a lifelong learner because she reads the books that are read in the literature classes at the high school. 
And as an administrator, Susan, Susan still loves teaching. She just teaches staff now and spends hours learning new methods and innovations that she then translates to professional development to help both students and teachers. Susan understands her staff as people too. She provides the encouragement and support that teachers need, especially during times of change and stress. Susan's ties to the community has served her well in BCSC. Well, hello, Susan. I've only known you now for, what, 30 years? And uh, I must admit, it's been a very delightful uh, experience, both in a professional and personal uh, way. Uh, you and I have went through some things together. That's the best way I can put it. I was, uh, I was always impressed with you, even back in 91, when I first met you, about how I thought your curiosity and your and your ability to want to learn new things and see what's out there and those kind. I was always impressed by that. You and I were always friendly rivals at uh, East and North, and of course, obviously, East was always better, as we both know, and I'm sure you'll have a rejoinder to that one. But you and I worked very well together, and uh, it was kind of nice the way we kind of bridged that gulf there for a while when there was probably what I'd call probably a, an intense rivalry, and you and I were certainly able to work together on a lot of common projects. So I was always impressed with that. I was always impressed with your ability to work with a variety of kids and a variety of teachers and staff. And it always made me feel good to know that there was somebody at North that I could call and uh, talk with about various um, positive pieces that, you, that the two schools could collaborate on. So I always uh, put it together as you and I were good collaborators. And, uh, and I, I think that's always a, a good piece. And obviously you've collaborated well everywhere else. You're going into the Hall of Fame, so you must be doing something right. Um, but I would say that basically uh, it's been a, a really great uh, opportunity to work and of course you've helped me to grow in, in a lot of my areas and give me different perspectives on things and I remember the old days when we used to make uh, we, on our friendly rivalries we would make bets on a variety of different educational things and for some reason I always lost I'm not quite sure how that happened and I finally got tired of buying you dinner all the time you know and having you sit there and being polite but smug knowing once again you won and so I finally got to the point where I just decided that, you know, rather than just being uh, this friendly rivalry, let's just continue to work on a friendly collaboration piece. And so uh, I came over, as they say, and uh, you and I worked on several different uh, projects together, several presentations, and of course I always liked our presentation approach. You did all the work and I did all the talking. So that always worked out really well, made me look good, and I think you felt good about it. And so. Uh, I don't know what else to say, but uh, I do remember you would put together all those slides and you get everything and you'd say, what do you think? And I'd say, I think that's just fine. And uh, smile and then away we'd go. And we did two or three of those deals and uh, it went well. It went well for us and I always thought we were a great team working on those kinds of things. So that was always a good thing. Um, I remember when I retired from uh, BCSC back in, the, in the 2014 in the summer that uh, how that had kind of your reaction to it. And I was quite, I was quite moved by that in the sense of, you know, I, I knew you were gonna miss me, you know, so that made me feel good. Uh, but once again, like a bad penny, we just keep turning up. So once again, when the Counseling Counts uh, opportunity presented itself and I was uh, fortunate enough to be uh, moved into the position of project manager on that, uh, one of the first people I thought about was you. And I thought about you because you have a way to get things done. And uh, I was always impressed by that, no matter what the circumstances might be. So we got you in counseling counts and gave you basically the whole piece on the, on the development of uh, assets for secondary school kids and uh, where you went. And uh, you were a committee of one at some times and lots of times then you collaborated with other members in the school corporation. And so uh, as we look at the success that counseling counts has had and it continues to have, you are a vital part of that. And uh, once again, it shows again about, you know, it's, you know, somebody says, well, what is counseling counts? I said, it's a system of people, and you're one of those people. And you're one of the kind of uh, people that make things go for us in such a way that we continue to uh, do good things, even despite the environment that we're all laboring in. And, uh, but yet you still seem to be able to get things done. And so, uh, I really look forward to that continuing no matter what our circumstances are over the next few years and um, I'm still going to be counting on you. So 
it's kind of like a lot of things. You just never go away. Just always kind of, it's like, I'm like the virus. I'm still around somewhere. I'm on, I'm on a new strain, you know, so watch out. I'll be chasing you down. So uh, uh, good luck and congratulations, and very much congratulations on the, uh, the nomination uh, for the Hall of Fame. And it's well deserved, and uh, I just want you to know that it's all because of me. Thank you. <laughs> Susan and I were colleagues for over 30 years. And as you might expect, in, in three plus decades, we had lots of conversations on different topics. Now, some of them were those terse, the situation demands an immediate resolution conversations. But also in that time, we had a chance to have the conversations that friends have, long winding conversations that include uh, some difficult ideas to process as well as much laughter. From our many conversations, I'll always remember a couple things. Uh, one is that Susan loves, she's a connoisseur of literature and poetry, and she was always on a mission to get students to love it also, but also to love the relevance it had to their lives. Uh, the other topic I always remember is another one of her missions. Susan has always had our neediest students at heart, uh, the kids that have the most difficult time in school and in life, and she's always been a strong advocate for finding ways to make their world better. As longtime educators, sometimes we also talked about retirement. And Susan's contention was that once an educator retires, their influence is only felt for three more years, the amount of time it takes for the last group of students to work their way through a building. And, uh, and I learned a long time ago not to argue with Susan on many things, so I'll add an amendment to this. I think actually, you know, an educator's legacy doesn't just last for three years, it's not with the students. The legacy is actually with the educators that remain behind and have learned the lesson. So on this really special occasion that honors Susan's years of excellence as an educator, I'd like to challenge the other educators to, to take up this same mission that Susan has. One, teach students to love your subject matter and also to see the relevance to their own lives. And the other is recognize and let's take care of our neediest kids. Susan supports others by believing in them finding and building on strengths and recognizing areas for growth. She is consistent with honest feedback and ideas for improvement. I had the privilege of working with Susan North for 26 years and from day one she was extremely supportive. She has continued to inspire me to be better and is still a go-to person for me in my new role. I have been extremely fortunate to be able to call Susan a mentor, a colleague, and a friend and I can't think of anyone who is more deserving of this honor.